In the book of 1 John, chapter number 5, and verse number 10, the Bible said, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he hath not believed the record that God gave of his Son. Man, that's pretty stout stuff, isn't it? And this is the record that God hath given to us, eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Eternal life is in Jesus Christ. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Father, it's a blessing to be in the house of God. It's a blessing to be among God's people. It's a blessing to have a copy of the Word of God. It's a blessing to be able to read. I pray you'd speak through thy servant today. I know that I'm nothing. I can't do anything without you. Come, Holy Spirit, breathe life in our words, illumination our thoughts. Use us today to glorify your name. And I'll praise you and thank you for asking Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to preach to you a little unusual sermon today. Jesus Christ with or without. Jesus Christ with or without. There's many comparisons in the Bible. Many comparisons in the Bible. You have Psalm 1 that compares uh, the wicked and the righteous. He said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seed of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf falls, who shall not with him whatsoever he doeth, shall prosper. But the ungodly are not so. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind bloweth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, not sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. There's a comparison between the godly man and the ungodly man. You have many comparisons in the book of Psalms. In the book of Psalms, there's many comparisons between the righteous and the wicked. In the book of Proverbs, you'll find a lot of comparisons between the righteous and the wicked. In the book of Matthew, Jesus compares the two foundations, a man built upon sand and one built upon the rock. The one that built upon the rock, his house stood. The one that built upon the sand, his house fell. So what are you building upon today? Are you building upon the rock? The rock is Jesus Christ. There's, uh, he uses uh, different people to compare and show us the difference between a righteous person and a wicked person. There's Cain and Abel. Cain was a wicked person. Abel was a righteous person. There's Esau and Jacob. Esau was a wicked man. Jacob was a righteous man. And so we have many comparisons through the Word of God. And that's what I want to draw today in the life of Jesus Christ. It is Jesus Christ with or without. Have you got him today or do you uh, not have him? Is he your Savior today or is he not your Savior? Well, the Bible says again and again in the book of John, he says, The Father sent me. Thirty-three times the Bible says the Father sent me or he sent me. Again, the Bible said the Father sanctified me. The Father consecrated me. Jesus said the Father sent me. The Father sanctified me. He set me apart. He consecrated me to come into this world. The Father spoke to him three times. We find the voice of God rang out from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Well, we know one time he didn't say that. He said some, something else. But anyway, we know he spoke three times in an audible voice to verify the fact that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And how people can miss that, I don't know. Well, I want to just, if you want to follow in your Bible, just write these down. I'm going to go from verse to verse or chapter to chapter in the book of John and show you some things. First of all, in John chapter 1 and verse 11 and 13, he said, He came to his own, his own received him not, but to as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And so there's a condition there, if you receive him, if you receive him, and that word receive simply means to believe. He said even to believe in him. Do you believe in Jesus Christ enough to accept him as your Lord and Savior? The Bible said then he'll give you the power to become a son of God. He'll make you a child of God when you receive him by simple faith. Isn't that amazing that you can become a child of God by believing and trusting Jesus Christ? And so there is that condition of believing. And of course that is again and again through the book of John. Number two, in John chapter 3, in verse 14 through 18, uh, Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, and he said, uh, As Moses lifted up the sermon of the windless, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Then he goes on and gives John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Then he goes on in verse 18, he says, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Let me just draw the comparison there. There is a comparison here. Here is those with him. The Bible said they shall not perish. A person who's got Jesus Christ will never perish. 
That means you'll never go to hell. Isn't that wonderful to know that, praise God, you got a ticket to heaven and that you're not going to the lake of fire, you're not going to hell? The Bible said, but have everlasting life. You're not going to perish, but you're going to have everlasting life. You're going to live forever and forever and forever and forever in the bliss of God. And then the Bible said, he that's got Jesus Christ is not condemned. Hey, we don't stand condemned today. We stand justified, uh, free from our sins, and uh, a child of God. And so what a blessing that is. But look on the other side. The evidently speaking, you look at this side and look at the other side. Those that are without Jesus Christ, they're going to perish. They're going to be lost and lost forever. You think about some of these people they lose out in the ocean. They never find them. The sharks get them and all that. Well, these folks are going to perish, but they're not going to be lost in the ocean. They're not going to be lost in space. They're going to be lost in the lake of fire one day in the by and by. The Bible said they're condemned already. You see, a man that does not have Jesus Christ, he's condemned right now. He don't have to wait until he sees the judgment. Some people say, well, I'll take my chances. I'll see it to judgment. Yeah, you're condemned right now. If you don't have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're condemned right now, right where you sit. Right where you stand, right where you are, wherever you hear this message, you stand condemned if you do not have Jesus Christ. You don't have to wait to see if you're going to be condemned at the judgment. You're condemned already because you have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You have not trusted him. You, you have not committed your life to him. Therefore, you stand condemned right now. How would you like to know that you're going to stand before a judge and that judge had already made up his mind that you're going to be condemned and you're going to be sentenced? He said, I wouldn't want to stand before that judge. We're going to stand before the judge of all the earth. He tells you before you get there that you're condemned already. Again, number three, this is John 3, 36. I'm just going through the book of John. Just keep your Bible open the book of John. Because these comparisons, as I was reading through the book of John, these things jumped out at me. And I said, my goodness, what about that? It's in the book of John. In John 3, 36, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. That don't mean he's going to have it. He's got it now. Do you know if you've got Jesus Christ as your saving Lord that you've got eternal life right now? The very day that you put your faith in Jesus Christ, that very hour, that very minute that you said yes to Christ and you surrendered your life to Christ, that very hour, that very minute, you have eternal life given to you. What about that? But on the other side, he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth upon him. The person that does not believe in Christ will not see life. There's multitudes upon multitudes of people in the world today that do not believe in Jesus Christ. Oh, they believe he's a, a great man or a great prophet. We was riding across Florida many years ago, and I sat across the aisle from this Jewish lady. Oh, she said Jesus was a, he was a good man, a great prophet. But they did not believe he was the Son of God. And the Bible said you must believe he's the Son of God. You must believe he's the Savior of the world. You must believe he has the power to forgive your sins and to save your soul. Because if you don't believe that, friend, you will not see life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life. Hey, what does that mean? Brother, you're going to see death. Again, he said, but the wrath of God abides upon him. The wrath of God abides upon him. I don't know about you. I don't want God angry at me. I don't want God against me. He said in the book of the Revelation, I have somewhat against you. I don't, I don't want God to have nothing against me to you. I don't want him to be angry at me. I certainly don't want his wrath to abide upon me because the wrath of God is a serious thing. You know, the Bible's talking about wrath <coughs> in the Sunday school lesson. And, of course, the Bible said in the days of the tribulation period, he's going to pour out wrath without mixture, no mercy in it. Oh, Habakkuk said, Lord, in wrath, remember mercy. Here's a prayer, remember mercy. I'm glad God's a God of mercy, but you know what? The Bible said a man that don't have Jesus Christ as his Savior and Lord, the wrath of God abideth upon him. Man, who wants to live under the wrath of God? Not me, brother. Run to Jesus, the rock of ages. He's a refuge. Run to Jesus. Number four, John chapter four and verse number 10. And this is Jesus talking to the woman at the well. And, uh, you know, Jesus asked her, I for a drink of water, and she said, well, you know who, you're a Jew, and I'm a Samaritan. Why, the Jews and the Samaritan don't have anything to do with each other. And, uh, you know, a woman and a man here at the well, you're asking me for a drink of water? And Jesus said, if you knew who you was talking to, you'd ask him, and he'd give you a drink of living water. What about that? You see, brother, all you got to do is ask. All you got to do is, you know, you don't have to beat God. In fact, you can't beat God, can you? Hey, you hadn't seen God, you have to talk to him by faith because you can't see him. And, of course, you don't know where he lives. We know, you know he lives in heaven, but, you know, you don't know where he lives at. 
Other than that, you know he's in heaven. And so if you're going to talk to God, you've got to talk to him by faith. You've got to believe when you pray. The Bible said, without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. And so you have to believe and trust that when you pray that he's going to hear you. But uh, here the Bible says, if you just knew who was talking to you, you'd ask him of him, and he'll give you a drink of living water. Oh, she said, Lord, give me a drink of that water that I won't have to thirst anymore. And uh, this is what Jesus said. He said, uh, whosoever drink of this water shall thirst again. If you drink this water, I'm going to drink a little water of this. That's literal water. I'll thirst again. I'll have to have another sup of that before I leave here, right? But you know what? Jesus said, whosoever drink of this water that, that uh, I give him shall never thirst, but that water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of living water springing up into everlasting life. It's going to be an artesian well. You know a Christian's got an artesian well? You know what an artesian well is, don't you? It just keeps running over and over and over. Now, I've told you before, you know, sometimes I like to look, put a glass on a spigot and just turn the water on and watch it run over. Boy, just watch it run over. That's what the Bible's talking about. It's an artesian well. Your soul's just running over, brother. It's bringing up an eternal life. And so what a blessing that is. Isn't that something? That is something. Praise God. And so here this, uh, you look at that comparison. Well, if you drink of the water that I give you, you'll never thirst. Have you drank that water that Jesus gives? Oh, yeah. The spiritual water. He, he's not giving you literal water. He's giving that spiritual water. That's right. That spiritual water. Then he says it'll spring up into everlasting life. It's, yeah. It satisfies. You know the word of God and the spirit of God satisfies you? The world don't satisfy you. You know, I've never been a drunkard. I've never drank. Uh, you know, I don't know what the stuff even tastes like, really. But you know what? A fellow who's an alcoholic, he's got to have it again the next day, don't he? Man's a drug addict, he's got to have it the next day. He's not satisfied. It just keeps calling for more and more and more. You know, God will satisfy you. He gives you peace, unspeakable joy, and peace like a river. Praise God. He satisfies. And folks are out there looking and trying to get something. They don't know what they're looking for. They're trying to get satisfaction. They're trying to gratify the flesh. And all the time, they keep missing what they're looking for. They keep missing. Why? Because it's not there to be had. Brother, in Christ is satisfaction. In Jesus is peace. In Jesus is everything you need. And so look at what he said here. You can have this water. Praise God. If you just ask for it, you could have it. And finally, she did ask, didn't she? And she got it. Well, look at the, on the other side. Without Christ, they're always thirsting, never satisfied, never satisfied. They're always thirsting. They won't ask for that water. If they ask, they don't ask in faith. You've got to ask in faith, believe it. You know, you've got to ask believing. A lot of people say, oh, Lord, forgive me. But they don't really mean it. Uh, they were singing the song yesterday, and, man, there's really good singers. At, you know, the, the folks came to sing for us yesterday in uh, Young at Heart. They was really good singers. They were singing the song Lord, I'll do anything to get closer to you. And I, I begin to think about that. Now, would you do that? Would you pray that prayer honestly and sincerely? Lord, anything I'll, you want me to you do, anything you want to do, Lord, to get me closer. Now, boy, you better stop and think about that before you pray that prayer, hadn't you? It might cost you a little bit. But do you want to be close to the Lord? Hey, brother, been be willing to pay the price. And so, hey, there's a comparison between the righteous and those who know not the Lord Jesus Christ. Then, number five, there's John 5, 23 through 25. Uh, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. That's Jesus talking. And he that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. So here, the Bible said, if you don't honor the Son, you don't honor the Father. There's a lot of people in the world today that say they honor the Father, but they don't honor the Son. So they got a problem. Well, look on this side here. He, uh, he says, he that honors the Son honors the Father. Amen. So if you got Jesus, you're honoring him, and therefore you're honoring the Father, because you believe the word that God gave of his Son. And he that believeth hath everlasting life. He goes on in verse 24, says, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation. That could be never come into condemnation, but is passed from death into life or passed out of death into life. And so look at that person that has Jesus and that believes in Jesus and received Jesus. He honors the Son. He honors the Father. And he uh, believes, when he believes and trusts his Christ, he's got everlasting life. In this building they say, I've got everlasting life right now. Hallelujah. Praise God. We can jump up and holler glory, King, and shall not come into condemnation. Never come into condemnation. You mean to tell me I'll never come into condemnation? Well, 
did not run or read it in the Bible? It's God's Word. And look on the other side. The person who does not honor the Son will not honor the Father. He has not believed upon the Son of God. He will come into condemnation. But this saint of God, he's passed out of death into life. And so what a blessing that is. And hey, he's passed into life eternal, into that life that never ceases with joy unspeakable and glory unspeakable. But this man who is without Christ, he will die, he'll live and die in condemnation. He will stand before the judgment of God in condemnation. He will spend eternity in the lake of fire in condemnation. Just imagine being condemned forever. Just imagine yourself in hell. You ever imagine yourself in hell? Well, you know, if you're a sinner, you better imagine that because that may be where you end up if you don't give your heart and life to Christ. Just imagine being in eternity in the lake of fire, in outer darkness, and you've rejected Jesus Christ, and you would regret it forever and ever. You'd regret every time that you said no to Jesus. You'd regret every time you said, I'd rather have the world as have Jesus. You'd regret every time you said no. Wouldn't that be awful to have to live with that forever and forever and forever? And so there will be that condemnation. Then I want you to notice number six right quick. In John chapter 5, 28 and 29. Marvel not for the hour is coming into which that all in the grave shall hear his voice. Right. Everybody's going to hear his voice one day in the by and by. And some shall come forth and shall come forth they that have done good in the resurrection of life. Amen. And they that have done evil in the resurrection of damnation. So they that have Jesus in their heart. They that have Christ are going to get up at the resurrection Amen. of life. There's going to be Two resurrections, right? Oh, yeah. And, of course, some folks run it together, but I believe there's going to be a separation of 1,000 years at least. Praise God. When Jesus comes in the rapture, you know what we're going to do? We're going to, we who are uh, in Christ are going to be uh, changed. The moment twinkle and eye, and the dead are going to be raised. The saints that's died in Christ, they're going to be raised with a glorified body. And so that's going to be a part of the first resurrection. Jesus Christ, he was the first fruits. And, you know, the first fruits had, uh, had uh, some right. folks to get up after he was resurrected. Yeah. They got up and appeared to many in Jerusalem, the Bible said. That's the first fruits of the resurrection. Yeah. And then here comes the harvest. Here comes the rapture. And then here comes the gleaning during the, uh, after the tribulation. And after the millennial be some gleanings and so on and so on. But then the wicked dead will be resurrected. They'll be in the resurrection of damnation. Everybody in that second resurrection will stand before the great white throne bar of God and be cast off in the lake of fire. My, my soul. If I was a sinner, I'd run to Jesus. Boy, I wouldn't wait. I'd just run to Jesus and collapse at the cross and say, Lord, I want you in my heart. I want you as my Savior. I want you as my Lord. I want to be in the resurrection of life when the saints get up, when the saints are resurrected. I want to be there. Praise God. Yes, sir, I want to be there. Again, number seven, right quick. John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. Then said Jesus to the Jews which believed on him, If ye continue my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Right. Now, I know a lot of our, our folks that believe in fall from grace use this scripture here and uh, prove that they can fall from grace. But I think they look at it wrong. I think they're looking at it wrong. Because look at here. He said, if you're with him, you're going to continue. You know, if you're saved, you're going to continue. You know why I believe that? Because... John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I believe it because the Bible said salvation is of the Lord. Salvation is not of works, lest any man should boast. By grace you say, through faith, that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. And so, brother, I believe what he's saying here, if you really say, you're going to continue. You're going to persevere. You see, I believe in the perseverance of the saints. And I believe that conversion is work of the Holy Spirit, right? You have to be convicted by the Holy Spirit in order to get saved. And I believe perseverance is a work of the Holy Spirit. I believe, brother, he gets a hold of you, and he's responsible to get you to heaven. Just as Eliezer went down to get Isaac a bride, you're responsible, Eliezer, to bring a bride back. And you take, make sure she gets back here for my son Isaac. The Holy Ghost is responsible to get us to heaven, brother. He seals us. The Bible said we're sealed by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. Ask you, when is the day of redemption? Praise God. That's when he comes and gets you and, out and then changes you and gives you a glorified body and takes you to heaven. Praise God, brother. If you're saved, you're going to continue. If you don't, that's a good sign you never did get it. That's a good sign you're a professor, not a professor. You're truly saved. And the Bible said you'll know the truth. 
If you're uh, with Christ, you'll know the truth. That's the reason to say you know the truth. It amazes me how some people can deceive others. That's a bad sign when folks can be deceived because that's a sign they haven't been with Jesus. Because when you've been with Jesus, brother, it's going to make a difference. Been with Jesus. And then, of course, the Bible said the truth will make you free. Praise God, we're free today. We're free from the law. We're free from sin. We're free, and one day, praise God, we're going to be in his presence and be free from the limitation of this old body. It's going to be a glorious day. Okay, look on the other side now. The Bible, if that is true, then that means those without Christ will not continue in his word. If you don't have Jesus, you're not going to continue. Uh, one question was asked this morning in the Sunday school lesson. Somebody was asked, one of our members, if somebody's going to cut your head off, would it be all right to deny that you knew Jesus? Hey, just get your head cut off and go on to heaven. Amen. Right. Just a split second, you'll be there. Amen. Right. I mean, praise God for you even feel it, you'll be in heaven. Right. That going to be something? To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Just get, go ahead and get your head cut off. That'll be all right. right. Don't deny Jesus, right? right? But you see, the world, we, they will. If you're not saved, you'll deny him. You'll deny him. you say, well, I don't know him. I don't know who he is. You say, Judas was saved. No, Judas wasn't saved. The Bible said he was a devil in the beginning. Jesus knew who he Jesus knew who he chose. He was never saved. Judas was never saved. Don't argue on that, brother. I mean, the word of God doesn't settle that. And of course, the Bible said they're not saved because they won't continue the truth. And of course, uh, the Bible says uh, it, they won't uh, they don't know the truth. If you're saved, you know the truth. Right? But if you're not saved, you don't know the truth. Uh, you know, sometimes when you've been through things, you know what it's all about. Uh, you ladies that's, that's given birth to children, you know what childbirth is, right? Well, us men don't know what it is. I mean, you, we, uh, some of them have seen childbirth, but we don't know what it is, right? We had been through it. I mean, we've seen you. And, of course, back when my, my kids were born, they wouldn't let me in the, with Carolyn to see how much she, she suffered and all that. But when Tammy was having the baby, you know, they let you stay in the room. And, boy, I just couldn't stay in there. When she started squalling and the ball, that was more than I could take. Boy, I had to get out of there. I just couldn't take that. But, you know, you've been through that. You know what it is. And if you're saved, you know the truth, right? But a man hadn't been saved, he don't know the truth. He sees, he sees how Christians act at church. He sees how they act through the week, and maybe he can put on. As Brother Sammy Allen said, it's pretty hard to be a hypocrite. That's a false face. You know, you wear a false face around. After a while, you get tired of having a false face. You want to be yourself. After a while, you just want to let down be yourself. But if you're saved, you can always be yourself. Amen. <laughs> hey, hey. And they don't know the truth, and they're not free. They are in bondage, brother. You see, a lost man, a man without Christ, he's in bondage. He's in bondage to sin. Sin's got him bound. He can't help himself until he looks to Jesus. Praise God. Well, let me give you a summary of what I've said. With Christ, we have eternal life. With Christ, we are the children of God. We're the sons of God. With Christ, we shall never perish. We'll never be separated from him. We'll never go to hell. We'll never experience the flames of hell. With Christ, we're not condemned. With Christ, the water of life springs up in our bosom, in our soul, in everlasting life. With Christ, we honor him. We honor the Father. With Christ, we shall never come into condemnation. With Christ, we've passed out of death into life. Out of death into life. Just like walking out of this room into the next one, we passed out of death into life. Oh, it's just one step, brother. It's a step of faith, isn't it? The saints of God that have Christ are going to be in the resurrection of life. When he comes to get his church, psh, up, we're going to come. Like popcorn, we're going to get up out of the ground, brother. Ain't no grave going to hold this body down, brother. When Jesus comes, praise God, we're going home. Amen. Yes, sir. Eve. And then the Bible said we'll continue in his word and we're free from sin. Oh, it's something to know him today. Isn't it beautiful to know him? Well, what about those that don't know him? Let me just give you a summary of what I've said. Without Christ, you do not have eternal life. You don't have life. You don't have it. 
Uh, without Christ, you're not a child of God. You're a child of the devil. Oh, how sad that is. Without Christ, you're going to perish. That means you're going to be lost forever. Without Christ, you're condemned now. You're condemned now. Right now. The Bible said without Christ, unless you receive him, you'll never see life. You'll never see life. You'll never go to heaven. You'll never see the blessings of the saints and never see God in all of his glory if you don't receive Christ as Savior. The Bible said without Christ, the wrath of God abides upon you. The Bible said you'll thirst forever. You'll never be satisfied. Never. There'll never be any satisfaction. Imagine living forever unsatisfied. No satisfaction, no peace, no joy, no happiness. The Bible said, they that do not have Christ, do not honor the Christ, do not honor the Son, and do not honor the Father. The Bible said, they abide forever in death. They'll abide forever in separation from God. That's separation from life and bliss and glory. They'll be in the resurrection of damnation. They'll be called out of their grave to stand before the great white throne bar of God. And without Christ, they'll stand at that great white throne bar of God and be condemned. They'll stand there to receive the degree of judgment, degree of punishment. You say you believe there's degrees in hell just as surely as your name's what it is. And then they'll be cast into outer darkness, into the lake of fire. You see, outer darkness is a place. You've heard me say this. Just like Gastonia is a place. Just like Charlotte's a place. Just like the United States is a place. And China's a place. Australia's a place. Out of darkness is a place. That's how I found all the stars and galaxies and constellations and all of God's creation is out of darkness. And out there somewhere, there is a lake that burns with fire and brimstone, and there the wicked will spend eternity forever. That is if you don't have Jesus. You don't have Jesus. I conclude with John 8, 24. I said, therefore, unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. I don't know anything to be any more horrible than that, is to die in your sins without Jesus Christ. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Could I see the hand? Be honest with yourself today. Do you have Jesus Christ? Is he your Savior, Lord? Do you know that you're saved? Just wave your hand at me. God bless you. I wonder if there's a person in this building, you say, Preacher, I couldn't raise my hand right there. I want to raise it right here. I need prayer today. Thank you for taking the time to join us in the service tonight. We appreciate you being there, and it's always a blessing to know that somebody's there watching, receiving a blessing from the Bible hour, and Maybe God has spoken to somebody. Maybe there's somebody there that God has convicted your heart. Well, salvation is simple, and, of course, the devil makes it complicated. And, of course, the devil's trick is to get people to procrastinate, put off salvation. Some of the time, uh, tomorrow will be a better time, or next year will be a better time, or some other time will be a better time, but not right now. That's a trick of the devil. So, beloved, don't buy the devil's lie. If you're not saved, you need to come to Christ tonight. You say, well, preacher, I made a profession, but I'm not sure about my salvation the Bible said, Christ in you, the hope of glory. The Bible said, if you have Christ, you have eternal life. And if you don't have Christ, you don't have eternal life. That's real simple. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And so if Jesus lives in your heart, then you have a hope of heaven. If he's not there, then you do not. I don't care how long you've been professing to be a Christian. I don't care if you're a deacon in the church, if you're a preacher, or if you're a singer, or what you may do. If Jesus is not in your heart, then you do not have a hope of heaven. If you claim you've got a hope, it's a false hope, and that false hope will take you down. It will not take you to heaven. It will take you down to hell. So, hey, but let me just be honest with yourself and be honest with God. And if you're not saved, why don't you just bow your head right where you're at and pray the sinner's prayer and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me for Jesus' sake. I surrender my heart and my life to you right now. I repent of my sins, and I turn to you with all my heart. I'm giving you my heart and my life right now. And I want you to come into my heart. The door is open. I open the door of my heart for you to come in and be my Lord and Savior from this night forward. 
Oh, but let me just pray that simple prayer. Commit it all to Christ right now. Just surrender your heart and your life to him and let him be the Lord of all. You say, well, preacher, I can't live it. I know you can't. I can't either, but Christ can live it through you if you'll let him in. The Bible said he came to his own. He came to his own people, the Jew, and they received him not. But to as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And so, beloved, when you believe on him and trust him, he'll give you the power to live right. Because you don't have that power in yourself. The devil, he would overpower you as quick as you turn the corner. But you see, he can't do anything with Jesus Christ. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And so when Jesus Christ becomes your Lord and Savior, he lives on the inside and the devil's on the outside. So you see, the devil can't come in. So make that commitment to Christ. Pick up that telephone. Call that number. And uh, somebody will hopefully be there tonight. I'm hoping we'll get the phone fixed so that we can have somebody answering the phone uh, when the program is on. But if not, just put your message on the answer machine, and then there will be somebody to call you back tomorrow. We certainly appreciate you being there. We want you to call that number and tell us uh, what the Lord has done for you. If you need to get saved and need counsel, just call that number. If you'd like to write, the address will be there. We'd be thrilled to hear from you. If you'd like to have a part in this ministry, we'd appreciate it. It does take money to operate. You pray about it. Become a co-laborer with us, standing with us each and every month. Thank you. Thank you for even being there. Thank you for praying for us. Thank you for telling others about the program. Join us this same time every week. But let me give you an invite to come and be with us right here to Zion Baptist Church in South Gastonia, just two blocks off of 321 South, a block and a half off the Neil Hawkins Road. We're three and a half miles south of I-85, so we're not hard to find. Our Sunday school's at 10 every Sunday morning, preaching at 11 on Sunday nights at 6, on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. We'd be thrilled for you to come and worship with us right here at the Zion Baptist Church. The first Sunday in November is Bring a Friend Day, and we give you an invite to come and be our friend on that day. The first Sunday in November, we would be glad for you to come and be our friend on Bring a Friend Day, the first Sunday in November. This is Leo Kirkendall. I'm going to let the singers take us all the air. May God bless you. Meet us again this same time right here next week. See you then. <laughs>